Welcome all you Beatles lovers. Welcome to Anna Dialogue. Today we are going to take a look at the two mixes now available of Revolver. The 2022 versus the 1987. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, guys, so uh, since you appreciated a lot the video that I recently did actually on the Pink Floyd album Animals, we were taking a look also there at the differences between the remixes and the influence of the AAD and the ADD type of remix. Now, uh, if you're interested, here is a link. Otherwise, you're going to find a link also in the video description. Uh, a lot of people correctly, understandably, wrote in the comments uh, that the AAD and the ADD, the two differences between the sparse code, remember, I also did a video on the sparse code, here is a link, where the first A is dedicated to the uh, recording process, the second A or D is dedicated to the mixing process, and the last one is for the master, it, which we're talking about CDs, it clearly is going to be a D. So the focus is on the second uh, letter because it's or D, digital, done digital, or A, done analog. And in fact, we're going to do this also on the Beatles album. So as I was saying, a lot of people said it's not a question of AAD or ADD. True, true. As I said in various comments, uh, the mixes clearly are completely different. By definition, they have to be. They are. There are completely different mixes. But the uh, analog or digital solution to do that mix does have a big active role. It's a part of the equation, okay? I, I perfectly understand and I subscribe to the fact that it's not a predominant factor. No. It's one, though. One ingredient, very important ingredient, but it's one ingredient. Okay. So apart from this, let's try to understand now what are the difference between the... 1987 CD, which I bought when I was very teeny tiny, 87, I got this in the 90s, but the release is coming from a US release of 1987, and this is the recent uh, reissue release with the 2022 remix done by Giles Martin. This was done instead by his father, George Martin, engineered by Jeff Emmerich. Uh, as you can see, very dull, this version here, just the list of names, pretty ugly. Here instead, they're replicating the uh, the LP much, much better. And I love the DG pack. I mean, uh, there's also some art. Uh, it's very nice. I mean, very be much better than this one. This is pretty ugly. I have all the CDs of, uh, of the Beatles bought in that period, so they are all... AAD, as you can clearly see it right here. I think you can see it. I hope you saw that. In any case, trust me. It also says the same here on the CD. And now we're going to do that same process. Since so many people are doing uh, the, the vinyl releases, I think it's also fun to do this because CDs are coming back a lot. And uh, there is this ingredient, this analog ingredient, missing or or uh, or present between the mixes, which I think is that adding that little extra interest. In any case, it's a, a great uh, excuse to try to analyze a, a famous mix like this. Even though we must remember that the original recording was done on a four-track machine, where the Beatles were doing something avant-garde, something new actually, in the period in 1966. Uh, probably even earlier while they were trying to elaborate the, the, the album, in any case, bouncing off the different tracks one on top of the other. So this is one of the big problems of the new remix, because we don't have the classical session tapes where you have a multi-track tape with every single track containing one instrument, for example. They, they, that, wasn't, that wasn't present, they didn't exist yet. We do know that the original mix was done on a two, on a four track machine so each track of the session tapes already contained several instruments okay 
or voices mixed up. So at that point, it's very hard to do a true remix. So what did they do? They uh, adopted a very new technology, which is called deep learning. Not even Giles Martin know what this is, actually, because I read an interview and he says, I'm not, I'm not that sure how it works. But it, it practically understands, for example, how the guitar of John sounds, how he plays it, how the voice of for example, Paul is, and after analyzing many tracks of this and probably other albums before or after this, not too far because then the sound changes a lot, I think, in the Beatles albums, the computer learns uh, how to do this with compl complex, very complex uh, algorithms, With that, which I, at that point I don't have any idea or knowledge, but I do know what we're talking about because as a few, know, a few of you know, I am an archaeologist, so we are doing this also with, uh, with different types of ancient literature inscriptions, um, for example, cuneiform or the, the hieroglyphs and things like that. So it is something I do know how it works a little bit. And it's interesting to know they apply this also on music. They're doing it in, on a lot of applications because it's so precise and so effective. So this is cutting edge technology. It's not a electronic separation of the different uh, sounds and instruments, okay? This is high, high technology. But in the end, the result is questionable. We'll try to go on this, try to understand my take, and uh, I'm very curious to hear your take in the comments below. I'm sure a lot of you already heard this remix. In any case, we're gonna do a little test, as always. I'm gonna put Taxman, and after also another track, but let's focus now for ta on Taxman, and you have to try to understand which is which, which clearly is pretty easy, I, I think. In any case, I will normalize the perceived loudness in order to have that same type of uh, pressure of volume and um, at that point afterwards we'll I'll give you a little more info and we'll try to understand what's going on okay are you ready let's start <laughs> Okay, are you ready to know which track is which? I'm gonna go ahead, if you want, pause the video, I'm going. Okay, the first track was the 2022 remix, okay? And clearly the second track was Taxman from the 1987 CD, AAD. So, uh, let's try to take a look at the sound wave, at the waveform. Okay, immediately it is clear, as you can see here, that we have a strong compression. I wasn't expecting that. On the Pink Floyd, it was a little present. Here is much more present. Okay, so already here we can see that there's a lot of micro clipping on the on the on the different peaks. Uh, and unfortunately, if we take a look at the, the reports of the dynamic range, the, the uh, MAAT software. We can see that the difference between the two is pretty noticeable. There's 3 dB of difference, which is not 3B, just simple 3 dB of sound pressure level. No, this is dynamic range 3 dB. It's, it's a lot, guys. And in fact, I think if uh, looking back at the sound wave, you could clearly see that. Here we're also going to see uh, a few images of the perceived loudness. So you can see the different LUFS. And in fact, on the ADD version, you can see the mix of 2022. There's a lot of, of red there below, a lot, a, lot, a lot of clipping in order to boost the sound, in order to have that big, big volume. Uh, which, But it, it's not only that, because it's not a normal remaster. This is a remix. And in fact, um, apart from these technical aspects, I would like to go over a little bit from with my impressions, simply for, as, a, as a listener, because uh, listening to Taxman, for example, you're already missing since the beginning uh, that subtle reverberation of the ambient, which is mixed with the hiss of the tape, okay? There is that, but you can sense that there are in a room. 
and that disappears, for example, before they start to, to sing. And then the rest of the song is very compressed. They boosted a lot the drums, because that's what people want now, before it was a little more buried. And uh, clearly, using this type of technology, you have a separation of the different parts of the, uh, of the voice and in the instruments. And this is even more clear, I think, this strange separation when we hear, for example, Eleanor Rigby. Let's try to hear a few seconds of that as well. Okay, guys, so as you have heard, I think it's rather clear, like the, the voice of Paul in that first part is just completely t taken out, boosted, and it has something strange. I, I know, the, the original album, uh, it, it has the stereo separation in a wrong way. At least, not wrong, it's just I hate when they put the voice on the side and the instruments on the other. But that's the way it was. That's that the creation of that stereo mix. In fact, I think the mono, which I have on the uh, uh, on my box set, is better. I also tested that. That's the winner, the clear winner. Not only because the the whole thing is less compressed and vinyl gives a little more uh, breath to everything, but it also has this combination of the different sounds, like the 2022 mix, which I do like, but done in a more natural way. In any case. Uh, the the um, the dynamic range between the two tracks of Eleanor Rugby is less. It's only one dB, which is already better. But other tracks have uh, still have that difference of three dB. Uh, for example, also um, I'm only sleeping. The difference between the two tracks isn't that pronounced. I must admit. So every track has its own story. I've noticed. But in any case, I must admit that once again. If I have to go on my famous little desert island, I would bring the 1987. Well, probably if I had room for my record player, I would take my mono mix. Oh, yes. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We're not going to do anything more like this for a while now. And please do leave your comments. I'm very interested. And what else can I say? Remember that music was born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.